Hello class, my name is Joseph Murray and this is my Module 7 Discussion Video Response. I will be answering Kristen Garcia's question. His question is, this leads to my question, which is, given the 1% have more control over politics than the 99%, is there some way this can change peacefully? Additionally, is this advantage really as great as it seems, or is it something that is negligible on the overall outcome? So, in my answer, Yes, the 1% has more control than the 99%. No, it does not have to say that. stay that way. Yes, historically it has been done violently. No, it does not have to be done violently. So when we look at the book that was assigned in this class, it was from a very dated and historical perspective. There are very few examples that are post-industrial revolution, and the ones that were given had nothing to do with society, but more about nation-on-nation -nation war. We are in a um, society now where war is becoming very rare and communication is becoming very accessible. We now live in the digital age where I can text someone on my phone from anywhere in the world and they will receive that in under a minute. We have YouTube which has lots of information, videos, courses, things like that. Education is more accessible now than it ever has been. So what can we do? to change it peacefully. Well, we do still live in a democracy. And like the textbook said when they were talking about societal upheaval, when societies collapse, the elites can no longer make their money because the ways they make their money require a working society. We have a democracy and the elites will not change that because without that democracy, they would not be able to exist. Well, that means if we can inform people, educate people, communicate, things like that, it is possible to convince 51% of the country to stop voting for politicians and to stop voting for ideas that negatively hurt them. All it takes is to have a voting block that keeps those people out of power. We saw it in the past with Ross Perot. He was a conservative person who did not like what the Republicans were doing. So what he did was he basically held the Republican Party hostage. He took about 20% of the Republican vote for two presidential elections in a row. And although he um, finished in last place every presidential election, he took enough Republican votes away from the other Republican challenger, which allowed for the Democrat to take office. Now, I understand that the problem today is in the with Republicans and Democrats, but that shows that you can kind of hold politicians hostage if you just take votes away from them, and that will force them to correct themselves, because politics is a job, and you have to be elected and re-elected to keep that job. And what we saw when Ross Perot did that was the Republican Party started to reform and be a little bit more conservative on fiscal measures. So that's a historical perspective for how um, you can achieve change democratically. I think it will take a lot of informing people, but information is more accessible now than it ever is, and we're only just now starting to begin to understand the capabilities of social media. When you think it, about it from a historical perspective, social media has been around for most of my life, and it has been for most of yours as well, but it has not been around for very long at all compared to how long most transformative events usually take. I think we're in the very infant stages of social media. And maybe not today, maybe not next year, maybe not, pres maybe not in the next presidential election, but certainly by the end of my lifetime, we will see a significantly more active electorate. And I think that's because of communication. So when you say, is the power advantage really as great as it seems, or is it something that is negligible on the overall outcome? Today, right now, it is as great as it seems. However, I think that will change. And I think that will change because of social media and communications. So it is very impactful right now, but it won't. So I hope that is a more positive outlook on how equalization could look in the future. I think more is possible than we give ourselves credit for, and it does not take an outright majority to change politics in this country. Rosh Pro did it with 20%, and 20% is not a very hard task. Well, I hope that answers your question. Thank you.